So hi everyone, this is Jessica from the Achievement Squad, coming at you with a guide for Cronus Before the Ashes. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get all of the missable achievements for the game. So in this video, we're going to show you how to get all of the kind of core collectibles. So they are scripts, books, weapons, and I'm also going to show you how to go about defeating the different bosses. And there are some miscellaneous achievements that are not linked to collectibles, which I'll show you along the way. However, we will not cover the achievements such as beating the game on a specific difficulty, as it's self-explanatory, uh, and beating the game whilst, part, uh, whilst not passing the age of 21. Okay, and in regards to the leveling up system, and I mentioned the age system also there, so every time you die, you'll age by one year. Um, as you age, you actually grow stronger in the arcane damage area, uh, but eventually you can stop, uh, will have to stop leveling up your um, speed and agility as you get too old, but you'll become more magical focused with the character and its attacks. The game also includes a leveling up system, so as you kill enemies you'll gain XP to increase it. I recommend that obviously put all of your skill points in to make this game easier. The bosses and enemies are this can hit you quite hard very easily I'd say. Now the first set of collectibles and achievements don't really start until you reach a place called Krell. So in the beginning you'll need to progress forward until you've activated the uh, the, the ward stone, the world stone. So this is Krell. Uh, once you arrive, one of the first things we're going to do, we want to defeat an enemy in the area. You're straight away onto your right and you want to give this guy a few whacks. Uh, and this is completely random by the way. But the enemies will drop something called dragon shards. Now dragon shards, you'll require them to upgrade your weapons. Uh, in this case that is three, five and so on, but you need to grab as many of these as you see them drop. Uh, they don't always drop from an enemy but they're handy to make your weapons stronger uh, and you'll need them to level up your weapons. The next item we're going to go after is the first scroll of the game. So you want to make your way into this kind of little alcove area and on the back bench you're going to find scroll number one. Now the next item that we're going to go after is a dragon heart and you get an achievement for finding your first dragon heart. Pretty much walk forward from the main door and you want to go in you'll find this dragon statue of Clawbone. You want to grab the heart off of the dragon uh, and this is your mechanism for healing. So as you're using these uh, in your general playthrough, be using them sparely, sparingly uh, because that will help you um, in terms of progressing through some of the tougher battles but you'll get an achievement for finding your first dragon heart in the game. The next part is then from the same dragon statue, you wanna make your way up the stairs to the left and we're gonna go after our next scroll. So head up the stairs, at the top take a left and you'll open this door here and inside this door and on the right you're gonna find a scroll next to the candle. Now for your next scroll, you'll have progressed significantly forward and you've encountered an enemy with a gun. Um, from that area, you want to keep going forward on the main path. Uh, there'll be a closed lock gate that you can't get through. And on your right hand side, you'll want to open this door. And inside this room, you're going to find a scroll on the table right next to the door. And then just to the left of that scroll, you're going to find something called a, uh, a dragon box. You want to pick this one up and you want to inspect it from your inventory. Once you've done that, you'll bag yourself an achievement for opening these boxes. It's worth collecting as many of these as possible because you'll get shards, dragon shards out of them, uh, oil from dragon oil uh, as well, which all lead to better weapon upgrades. So it's worth noting, as I mentioned earlier, for the weapon upgrades, you've got an achievement for getting up to the max. It requires three dragon shards for the first upgrade, five for the second, eight for the next one and then you'll require some enhanced dragon shards uh, also to take it up to the max level the highest level you can get a weapon to is the level number five now as you progress through the area you'll notice some scaffolding straight in front of you uh, and you'll come to an area where you hear a guy also hitting what sounds like a hammer he is in the room just to your right this is the blacksmith now do not attack this guy you need him alive for missable achievements later in the game but open up the door, have a quick chat to the guy, he's going to inform you about something called a golem. You'll also get an achievement for meeting the blacksmith the first time around. You'll also notice I have to open up my achievement menu because I had some issues with the achievements unlocking. Uh, however, I believe this is now all fixed and functional. Um, but yeah, as you can see, just to prove to you, I did get the achievement for meeting the Krell blacksmith. Now just to show you quickly as well about the weapon upgrades, this is the third dragon shard I actually found as I was going through the game. 
Um, once you've got the third one, what you want to do is you want to hop into your inventory. This is These are randomly dropped from all around the world uh, and from all the different characters. Hop into your inventory, you want to press X on the weapon that you want to upgrade and you want to hit the A button and that's just going to take it up a level. This will increase the damage and it will also increase the damage that occurs when you commit a counter strike against an enemy. So that's either by parrying or dodging the, uh, the attack that they throw at you, which you do with left bumper and left trigger. Okay, so the next collectible is significantly further on. This is after your first encounter with the route, and you'll eventually come to this door, which is in the second area after going up in the lift, and you've got to progress a little bit further forward. Where you see this giant skull door, you want to make your way through to the room, and then on the right-hand side by that door, you'll find your next book to read. Now we're going to go find our first missable weapon of the game, which is the Krell Hammer. Eventually you'll have solved a puzzle with water and it's going to start flowing into this room and this area is now going to appear in front of you. On your right you'll see a gemstone that you need to pick up to move the game forward. However, leave it where it is and enter the door that's on the left hand side. As you come into this area you're going to find two enemies that need to be killed, so take them out quickly. Um, and then at the back of the room you're going to find something called the Krell Hammer, which is your first alternate weapon of the game it's a heavy weapon uh, which is very effective against some of the stir more sturdier boxes bosses and uh, enemies so the ones with thicker shields and heavier armor you want to use that against it because it will help out So after finding the Krell Hammer and you've opened up the original Skull Door we were looking at earlier, you want to make your way into the Skull Door and you're going to follow the path around and you're going to go to the right and on your left you'll see the giant guardian walking around the room. But keep following that forward until you reach the end and you want to take a right into the door that is at the end. There's normally quite a tough enemy in here but I've taken them out for uh, purposes to make it smoother. But right by the door you're going to find your next book. Okay, and for the next part, I'm going to show you get a item that's linked to an achievement later in the game. So once this mirror is operational and you found the missing parts, you want to enter the code that you see on the screen into the plinth. Uh, and then you want to make your way over to the mirror and you want to enter inside it. So you use this mirror to actually get into this area in the beginning. Enter this and it's going to teleport you into a bookcase and make you very small. You want to walk forward and you're going to encounter some enemies. So I'm going to cut it short so you don't have to watch me fight terribly. Make your way down to the end and you're going to use this bookmark to abseil down to the next level of the shelf. And as you get down there, the first enemy that you encounter on this shelf is going to drop something called the wind-up key. Now you need the wind-up key to obtain the scythe later in the game. So head over, take out this guy and grab the key from his body. So the next part is after you've pushed the key out of the bookcase and you're back to normal size and you've collected the key off the floor, we're going to want to go after our next scroll. So the key allows you to open doors that are now previously inaccessible and these are one of the doors. So to the left of that bookcase, make your way down here and you'll have to open up this door. And on the left hand side by the bed you're going to find your next book to read. And then the next item that we're going to get is in the same room, but this is for the Krell King. Just to your right, you're going to find on the table by this plant pot a locket. This locket is something we need to give to the Krell King later in the game for an achievement. 
So the next collectible that we're going to go after is something called the Sunstone. I'm in the Guardian room, as you can see. He's currently not there because I found this a little bit later on. Um, but once you are in the Guardian room, you want to make your way left under the gate and you want to make your way down the stairs that you've got on the left hand side. This is part of the main path that you would be going forward at the start of this area. And then there's a door that is directly opposite you as you come into this area. So walk on through. You want to open the door on the other side using the uh, skeleton key or the master key. And as you come into this room, on the right you'll see another dragon statue. You want to take the diamond that is off of it, and this is called the sunstone. You'll bag yourself the sunstone achievement at the same time as well. Now the next achievement is a little bit of a miscellaneous one, so make your way back to the mirror. And we're going to use this mirror to warp into Ward 16. So you want to head to the plinth. Now you actually get the Ward 16 code for the mirror from looking through a window in Ward 16. However, in this case you just need to enter into the um, device the symbols that I put onto the, the screen here. Once you've entered those symbols into the device, you want to walk over to the mirror and that's going to teleport you into Ward 16, bypassing the fact whether you need the Ward 16 keycard. So once you've entered that, per se, uh, and that will appear, and then you want to walk on over. There's not a lot you can actually do in Ward 16. There is some good information on the computers in there if you want to read them, and you can go see some dreamers. However, just I recommend returning straight back to this area to getting ready to take on the next boss. But you'll get yourself the Mirror Mirror achievement for getting to Ward 16. So we're now going to take on the Krell Guardian and you want to enter AVC into the Mirror Stone to allow you to get access to him. This is going to cause you to grow inside ready to take size and to take him on. Uh, and as you enter this room he will come around and start coming for you. I recommend using the Krell Hammer to hit him with some pretty hard damage. Lock onto him at all times. He's pretty slow. So just make sure that you dodge his attacks uh, and get out of the way in time. But keep timing that dodge perfectly to get the, the boost off of the, um, the dragon stone that you've got equipped. Hit him in the back where possible because this causes him to stagger. But pretty much keep your shield up at all times and dodge when he takes a swing at you. Um, don't overdo it on the combos um, if you're unsure. But just take your time. It's pretty easy in comparison. Uh, but yeah, it's a fairly straightforward fight. So once you've done with the Krell Guardian, you're going to get teleported back to the throne room where you see the root and he's growing in size. Uh, once you've done that, you want to make your way to the right and this door is now accessible to you because of the master key. You want to open up this door. We're now going to go grab the Krell Shield and get the Rock Wall achievement. I recommend equipping the uh, Krell Shield as it gives you the best defense in a game from a shield. So enter the door, make your way down the stairs and then you want to take a right and you'll find it just hanging up on the wall here you just want to pick it up and you'll bag yourself that achievement Now in the room of the right, of the, uh, sorry, in the left of the Krell shield, you're going to find a box and in there you're going to find something called dragon oil. Now dragon oil will upgrade dragon shards 
allowing you to access the higher level of the weapon upgrades. But what you want to do first of all is go into your inventory and you want to find either a dragon shard or the dragon oil. Uh, and you want to push X to combine this with one of the shards. So select the dragon oil, press X, and then you want to select the dragon shard. This is going to bag you the achievement for creating your own elite dragon shard, so the rare dragon shard. Uh, I've already unlocked this at this time, uh, but it's something that you can get by doing this. I recommend that every opportunity you get to create a rare dragon shard you should do because it allows you to access the more stronger weapons. Probably in a single playthrough you can only go up upgrade maybe two weapons to the max. Now from the next collectible we're going to go from the Krell Shield again and in the same area where we found the Dragon Oil. Enter the room that's to the left of the Krell Shield and you want to go down the ladder. Now as you come down the ladder you're going to find a, a book that, sorry, a scroll that is on the pallets just ahead of you. So make your way over and you want to give that one a quick read. And using the Krell Shield location as a waypoint again, so we're back at the top, we're now going to go after the hidden Krell weapon. So turn around from there and make your way to the far side of the room and enter the door. Take the right as it's available and then take a left Go up a small set of stairs and keep following the corridor. Walk up the big set of stairs past the cauldron and keep making your way towards the light at the end of the room. Take a left and you're going to find this statue and next to that statue is a crooked torch. Press A on this one to straighten up the torch and that's going to cause the statue to spin around. Behind that statue you're going to find the Krellax which is the hidden weapon in the game. You'll bag yourself an achievement also for finding this one. So the next part requires some significant story progression, uh, but you're going to come across eventually a stone golem boss. I recommend that you use the Krell Hammer for this one, and obviously make sure that you're using your Dragon Shards, but keep the, the Krell Hammer equipped so that you do maximum damage to this guy. He's a bit tough in the beginning to figure out, but just time your attacks correctly. Uh, he's pretty slow and sluggish to move, but make sure you dodge his attacks so you can get the boost benefit off the damage of do uh, dodging effectively. But keep chipping him away with the hammer and eventually he will die. Um, he was a bit of a pain for me in the beginning this one, but practice, learn his moves, dodge effectively uh, and eventually he will die. And he'll give you something called the Golem's Eye and this is something that we need to give to the blacksmith that we met earlier in the game. Okay, so now we need to go see the blacksmith once we've killed him off and we've got the eye. So you'll need to backtrack uh, and to get there you need to take a left at the world stone. Uh, but I'm going to cut out that walk. It's literally just exit the way you came into the main throne room. Now once you're here you want to enter the door to the right like you did earlier and we're going to go speak to the blacksmith. Once you've done it he's going to forge for you the Krell mace which is going to bag you the next achievement. The eye. The golem is vanquished? Never thought to see it. Perhaps a shred of hope remains in this desolate kingdom. Here, as promised.
Okay, so we're going to have made some significant uh, progress forward, and we're going to be in a very familiar world for those of you who've played Remnant. We're going to be in uh, Yaisha, I think it is. The place where the uh, pan enemies are, the guys who like to throw their swords. It's one of the last areas in that game. Uh, once you get to this world stone, you want to take a left, and you're going to follow it all the way through. Uh, and you're going to go through so multiple sets of doors. You'll come to this locked gate eventually, and you want to take a left, and you want to go down the stairs. And as you go down to the stairs, you're going to hit a T-junction. You want to take a right, uh, and you want to follow this down to the end. Now, it's worth noting that there's actually a wall in the way originally, but you can walk through this wall. It gives off like a watery effect. Once you go through it, it will unlock the door. And in here, you are going to find the next dragon stone. Now, this is the lightning dragon stone, and you'll get an achievement for finding this one also. Now using that uh, world stone again as the waypoint, and I do apologize, it's because I found the lightning stone at a later point. Um, but going from that same world stone, we want to actually be taking the left direction this time from the uh, from the lightning shard. So I apologize about the little backtrack that I did here, uh, but it was a bit tough to organize the clips as I found it later. Um, as you can see up there, there's also the pan flutist, which you need for later in the game. So make your way into the place, head down the stairs, uh, and as opposed to taking a right this time, take a left. And then you're going to follow the pathway along, uh, and eventually you're going to go into a room which has got a couple of enemies in. But on the right hand side, as you come through this area, you're going to find your next collectible that is on the right hand side. Now you can get your next scroll after you've pushed the statue off of the top stairwell and this is going to cause the area to open up above us but using that last collectible as the waypoint because you've got to come back down the stairs that's next to it anyway make your way back down through the corridor and you want to keep following it straight uh, as you come through this door you want to take a left and you want to make your way down to the end and go through the door just over here uh, there will be an enemy in here at this time however he's gone at this moment and you're going to make your way over to the embalming table and you're going to find your next book to read on top of that. We are now going to go get ourselves the pan spear. So from that same book uh, on the embalming table, we want to make our way down the ladder in the room that is just behind us. And once you're at that bottom of that ladder, you want to go to the right room of the ladder if you're looking at it, or as you get off, it'll be your left. Uh, and the pan spear is hanging up on the wall on the right hand side. So enter the room to the left, look to your right immediately and grab the pan spear from here. Okay, so once you've got your pan spear, we're going to be significantly further on in the story and we're just going to have found a box which contains a rune, a labyrinth box I believe it's called. Uh, the plinth that it's on will disappear into the floor. Next to that there's a set of stairs you want to make your way up and then keep going further up and eventually you're going to encounter the pan flutist that you'll be familiar with from Remnant from the Ashes and you want to talk to him. Now, we need to get his pan flute off of him. Do not fight him for the pan flute. One, he's pretty strong if you're going to try and fight him the first time around. Uh, but he actually will give you three riddles which you need to answer correctly so that you can get some achievements. So exhaust the conversation. Do not say anything but other than saying, yes, I will accept your riddles. If the Paxeltech proves itself worthy, the riddle shall I ask. Three chances shall it have. Pay heed, Paxeltech. Alive I am not, 
yet still I grow. Lungs I have not, yet breathe I must. Teeth I have not. Now, for the first riddle, the first answer is a fire. It is not a tree, even though it's quite easy to believe that it is. Uh, also, if you get these wrong, he'll also start fighting you. You'll need to dashboard your game uh, if that's the case. Yeah. Um, but, yep, first response to the first riddle is a fire. Perhaps I have misjudged it. I have no doubt the Paxel Tech will conquer this one. Listen, I have eight to spare and am covered with hair. What the next answer is a cat. Um, I find this slightly interesting Indeed. because I, I, I don't know if cats actually cats exist in this realm. I'm going to assume so, but I would have thought it only on Earth. But yep, the answer is a cat. Most and then the last one is both of them because it's a question, not really a riddle, but more of a question of what weight. So a pound of ore and a pound of wood are both a pound, therefore it's the same weight. It should savor this small victory. Of course, a pound of ore and a pound of wood weigh the same. One pound. The Paxotec has earned the flute. Here, take the prize. And a little bit more as well. It shall need any and all advantages. Once you've done this, you'll bag yourself an achievement for uh, answering all those riddles correctly and getting the pan flute. So we're now going to go on to our next collectible and this is after you've lowered the drawbridge using the pan flute in the statue uh, and we're going to go after a collectible that's actually linked to Andrew Ford uh, who is one of the guys of interest in Remnant from the Ashes, it's somebody that you go find later and he'll make his way back to the ward eventually. So cross over the bridge and you want to take a left and not a right, make your way down to the water, there'll be a few enemies in this area as you're going through but I keep clearing them out just to simplify the guide. Uh, and you'll see a waterfall on your left hand side. Behind that waterfall and next to the sleeping and camping equipment you'll find the uh, book that was left behind by Andrew Ford's team. So the next part is another boss fight which is in the middle of this area. As you can see I got my ass handed to me and I'm being kicked out of the world stone. Uh, but this is the next fight, it's to fight the Pan Queen which is found, uh, she's found just to the left of this um, world stone. You'll come across her naturally through progression. Um, she's a relatively easy boss, I say. Um, but first of all she'll have two uh, support characters with her. Now you'll need to get rid of the supporting enemies. Uh, before you can actually fight her. So take them down uh, and once you've taken them down she'll step down off of her throne on the top uh, ready to fight. So for these guys just make sure you dodge and use your sword uh, in this fight because it's a relatively quick fight so you need to be a bit nimble. Uh, but yeah take down the two enemies and she'll jump down from the throne. And once they're down, heal up if you need to. She'll step down. So she's actually called the Red Willow, with Red Widow, but she is the Queen of the Pan. Uh, her attacks are very quick, but relatively easy to dodge. So she'll jump around a lot. When she jumps, you just need to dodge and time your attack so that you can get the, the drop on her. Um, eventually, once she's had enough of you, she's going to start performing some lightning attacks. Uh, these lightning attacks, I, I'd say she doesn't do them if you're so a little bit closer to her. So th about this range, she'll generally tend to avoid them. Uh, but if she ever does, just put your shield up and make sure you get out of line of sight as quickly as possible um, because it will drop your stamina, stamina very quickly. 
but keep chipping away at her. Use those jump attacks as a, a key of best time to dodge and then land the hits on her where best possible. Relatively easy boss and should drop fairly quickly. Now you've taken down the Red Widow and you've progressed a little bit on, you'll be back outside uh, and this area is going to have a few big enemies and a few of the, the summoner enemies. You want to keep pushing forward and we're going to go for our next book. We've already got the achievement for finding the 10 readable items. However, I'm going to show you where the rest of them are if you're following on and you've maybe missed one. You'll come back inside after you've just been outside and then on the right hand side as you're progressing through the area, you will find a book by a door. Now for the next book, so there's actually a total of 16 books and scrolls in the game that we found. Uh, like I said, there was 10 for the achievement. The next one is not too far away from the previous one. So make your way through the room and you're going to come across this area with these kind of moon shapes on them. You want to follow the eclipse pattern around, otherwise you're going to fall down. But just follow the path that I do uh, and follow it across to the other side. Once you're on the other side, you'll need to do the same again for another puzzle. So to solve this one. When you enter the room, look to the right, go to the full circle, look to the left and go as far as possible across the other side of the room, look to the left and go to the next circle, left again and then make your way across to the red circle. Once you're across the other side, you want to take a look to your right and a book will be on the pedestal just in this room. Okay, so we're now going to go after the Pan Buckler, which is the next achievement. Eventually you'll fall through a trap door and then you'll have to switch off these swinging axes using a stick that you got from the Red Widow. Uh, and it's eventually as you come across this door, it's along the main path, you can't miss it. You want to enter in uh, and you're going to go to the back of the room, but you want to take a right. And as you enter this room on your left hand side, you're going to find the Pan Shield and bag yourself an achievement for this one. Um, it's not my shield of preference, I prefer to stick with the Crow shield personally. So next up we have the Pan Guardian. So this is the final boss of the Aisha. Um, he's pretty much along the main path, you can't miss him. I recommend for this one having the Crow Hammer equipped uh, and the Crow shield. Now the guy is pretty big but he has some quick movement, but he's also got some slow movement there in, in there as well. Uh, he's got a lot of weapons that you want to keep an eye on, um, but he's, he's not relatively too bad. So once he comes to life and kicks everything off, um, the main attacks you've got to watch out for are his swing. So he'll spin his bottom arms around and swing around and attack you. Uh, he'll do a thing where he pummels the floor and creates a bit of a shockwave and pushes you back. Uh, but just keep dodging and keep your shield up and keep hitting with the hammer. Uh, eventually, once he's fallen down, he'll come down to his knees and you'll be able to hit him quite hard once you've done enough damage. 
it's roughly once per kind of life bar uh, that he'll do this. Now be warned, he will charge up and use some uh, electricity to his attacks to make himself a little bit stronger, but he will then start to rush you with some very quick attacks. When he does this, you want to keep your distance, um, just release the shield and just keep moving backwards. You don't need the shield up in this sense, but yeah, keep moving away from him and he will spin around, but eventually he'll grow tired and stop. Uh, which is this attack just here. He also does a slam attack, um, just dodge to the left or to the right when he does this, but this is actually quite handy because it will give you a bit more of an opening to hit him. But yeah, keep dodging, keep your shield up um, when he's not rushing you, uh, and eventually you'll drop the guy who's relatively easy to beat all, uh, overall. So we're now going to go grab the final dragon stone, which is the shadow stone, uh, which is easily the best stone in the game as it allows you to heal yourself on contact with the enemies. Um, so we're back at the, the route, we want to sit out to the left, and he's now gone and punched a hole through the gate just over this way. You're going to walk down through this corridor. As you get to the other end of the corridor, there's a door at the end next to some statues which will take you out into the garden. Head out into the garden and you want to follow the pathway around and when you can, take a right you're going to go down a set of stairs. As you come down the set of the stairs, you want to take a left, and in the corner you're going to see a ladder, which is very well hidden, sorry, more stairs, which is very well hidden. Uh, and at the bottom you're going to find the shadow stone. So once you've taken down the Pan Guardian, you're going to get teleported back to the throne room where the route is. Uh, but at this point we've progressed a little bit further forward uh, and we would have opened the bird door by using the crows, getting the, the diamond from the crow and using the seeds to, to get its attention. Now we're going to actually get our crow weapon and we're going to swap that over for the first weapon that we start with. So once you go through the door, head up the stairs. At the top of these stairs take a left, it's a little bit tricky to see. And you want to go into this door here uh, and you're going to find a pedestal where you can pick up a crow sword but it's going to lock you in the room so pick that one up and then you want to press a and you're going to put your normal sword down onto the plinth and this is going to bag yourself the achievement for swapping your starter weapon over called worth it And now from the Krell weapon that you picked up, turn around and make your way out the door and cross the landing and go across the other side. And then take a right into the first room possible. 
There'll be a few enemies in this area, but as you come in, you're going to find your next book on the bench just ahead of you. Pick that one up and give it a read. And then you want to make your way into the next room and you're going to find book number 14 out of 16. Um, like I said, you only need 10, but I'm showing you the location of all of the scrolls and scripts that we found. So from here, once that's done and you're done reading, make your way into the next room uh, and you'll find this book on the right hand side as you enter. So now we're going to go after our next missable achievement. So once you've done that, you want to make your way to the left from that book and into the next room. And we're going to go speak to the Krell King. Now as you get close to this door, I've already exhausted the dialogue because I tripped it by accident. Uh, but he's going to want to take that locket off of you that you found earlier. So exhaust all conversation with the guy behind the door and you'll bag yourself an achievement for, um, for helping him out and giving him his keepsake. And here, stranger, accept this... And now for our next book, so from the king's room or lair or whatever, uh, we want to exit back out and you know, take a right as you're leaving uh, and as you go through the bedroom, continue across to the other side, take a right and go out the door and then once you've left this room, take a right again, take a left and we want to follow the stairs up and then take a left through this door just here and at the bottom of the stairs on the left hand side, you're going to find a book which actually contains musical notes. Have a quick read of this one. And now we're going to go on for the final book or scroll um, collectible with the game. This is number 16 that we found. So make your way back up the stairs and take a left as you exit out of the door. You want to make your way down to the end of that corridor and go through and go through the next door immediately and the third straight after. Take a right and then you want to take a left uh, and stay on the right hand side and you walk into this room and there's a little alcove just on the left here make your way in and you want to read book number 16 now once you're done with that we want to trigger the uh, ability to get the scythe now I made a bit of a mistake here but the little robot that is just sat propped up against the wall you can place the wind up key in him so he's propped up here but he's moved in this situation because I didn't realize what it was going to do um, so make your way around once you've put the key into the back of the uh, the toy, he's going to make his way over to this button here and stand still on it. And that's going to open up a secret doorway that's just on your left hand side just here. Head inside, make your way up and you want to follow the corridor around and eventually you're going to reach the scythe weapon. So once you have the scythe, you're going to have exhausted all weapon collectibles and all uh, missable achievements and the books and scripts so we literally just now jump straight to the next boss which is the labyrinth boss he is at the end of the labyrinth itself now for some reason I have a bit of a bug with this boss he spawns in with half the health I have no idea to the reason why I'm okay with that um, I recommend using things like the sword in this particular fight because he's a little bit quicker than the others now his attacks that you've got to watch out for is he'll roll towards you quite quickly. Uh, you need to dodge out of the way. Um, he has some swiping attacks which you just need to do the basic dodge on. Just figure out the timing. But he also has a teleport ability. Uh, and when he does the teleports you just need to make sure that you're moving around the arena and not standing still. Maintain a medium to close distance against this guy as he will um, fire out these long distance lasers at you. Which you probably don't want to be any ne anywhere near. But as you can see, he's pretty much a swipe attack, and then when he teleports, you just need to keep moving, uh, but stay at a medium range for him to prevent him from doing the lightning beam across the room, which is quite difficult to avoid. Eventually, he'll fall, and you'll bag yourself the achievement for beating the Labyrinth Guardian.
So once he's fallen, you'll bag yourself the achievement for beating him. Uh, and then we go on to the next boss, which is the final boss in the game, which is the Dreamer, uh, which is Clawbone. Not Singe, it's Clawbone, by the way, for, uh, for you guys that are fans of the Remnant series. Um, he is inside a Dreamer, located in Ward 17, which you'll eventually get to through following the game's progression. So as you reach the Dreamer, he's going to do what he did last time in Remnant. He's going to make contact with you and behave and warp you into a alternate reality. Uh, and you will find Clawbone in the situation. Now, there are some rules when fighting Clawbone. He is certainly the hardest boss, I would say, in the game. Uh, as you can see, my hair is grey as the character's gotten a lot older here. Um, he did give me a bit of a tough time in the beginning. Now, the golden rule with this boss is do not use Dragon Hearts whilst he is present. If you use a Dragon Heart, he will drain your health and actually kill you. Dragon Hearts are useless in this scenario, so use the Shadow Stone if you need to heal your health back up to full. Now, his primary attacks consist of bites. Uh, he'll either do a one or two bite attack, uh, and then he'll do swipes if you are on uh, one of his blind sides and spin around. He will blow fire at you from a distance, um, so try to keep a close range where possible. The fire will completely take down your blocking ability very quickly. Uh, but keep dodging his main attacks and you'll get the buffs from the damage. Uh, and if you're running low on health, activate the Shadow Stone um, to regenerate your health from his. Eventually he'll stop and pause for a second. Uh, you want to be out of the way at the front of him because he'll shoot his fire directly in a straight line. Uh, but he's then going to jump out of the arena. Uh, he'll either start flying around and scorch the ground with fire or he's going to jump back in and land directly in front of you. When he does this, just keep moving around the arena with a small jog. Um, don't need to necessarily sprint, but this will cause him to miss you easily. So when he goes airborne, um, that is your opportunity to also heal because he's not present if you need to use a dragon heart. Uh, don't do it whilst he's present because you will kill yourself. Now he jumps at the arena of every bar of health that he's used, but now's your opportunity to use your heart and you won't die from using the heart. Shout out to uh, Games of Dane for that tip off by the way, uh, very handy as that made my life a lot easier. Um, so keep chipping away at him, it's pretty much the same attacks from here on out. He does have an area effect attack, just don't stand near him when he's doing it, which is this attack here. Um, but keep chipping away at him and eventually he'll fall. He's not too bad in the end. Um, yeah. But I've been Drastic from the Achievement Squad. If you find this guy useful, drop us a like, comment, subscribe, and happy hunting.